Let's solve problem number 4 on time complexity of loops. The topic of this presentation is time complexity of loops solved problem. Let's proceed and let's see the problem first before solving it. Here is the problem. Consider the following C function. This is the C function. Asymptotic notation of fun in terms of theta notation is these are the options given to us and our job is to determine the correct option. In the question, we have been asked to find the asymptotic notation of fun in terms of theta notation. This means our job is to determine the time complexity of this function fun in terms of theta notation. In these options, the time complexities are given in terms of theta notation. Let's try to find which of these options is the correct option. For this, let's focus on this code and let's try to understand it properly. Now, let me remove this statement and these options and let's focus on this code. In this function, the parameter is n, which will receive some value, and within this function, the two variables are declared i and j. This statement will take constant time. So, it will not contribute much to the time complexity. But what about this for loop structure? This is the nested for loop structure because this for loop is within this for loop. And in these for loops, variable n is used. Clearly, their time complexity depends on the variable n. So, this nested for loop structure will contribute most to the time complexity of this function. And hence, we can say, that the time complexity of this function is same as the time complexity of this nested for loop structure. Now our job is to find the time complexity of this nested for loop structure. This gives us the time complexity of this function, which we are interested in finding. Let's try to understand this nested for loop structure first. In the outer for loop, variable i is initialized to 1, i is compared with n, and i is incremented by 1. This for loop will execute n times because i receives values 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on up to n. This means i has received n values and therefore there are n iterations of this for loop. What about this for loop? In this for loop, variable j is initialized to 1, j is compared with n, and j is incremented by i and after the increment, j is updated to the result of the increment. So, j is updated by j plus i. Here, we can observe in the update statement, variable i is used which is the outer loop variable. This means variable j depends on the variable i and hence this for loop depends on this for loop. This is not the independent nested loop structure. This is the dependent nested loop structure. And we know finding the time complexity of the dependent loop structure is not that straightforward. We need to do the proper analysis in order to find the time complexity of this type of structure. In this for loop, because of the use of variable i, we now need to properly analyze these two for loops. This means, for each iteration of the outer for loop, we need to understand the behavior of the inner for loop. So, now let's do the proper analysis to find the time complexity of this nested for loop structure. In the first iteration of the outer for loop, i is 1. So, in the first iteration, the value of i is 1. Then i is compared with n. We know the current value of i is 1, so we can replace i by 1. We are comparing 1 with n. Let's say 1 is less than n, therefore this condition is true. Hence, we will execute the body of this outer for loop, which is this inner for loop. Now, we need to completely execute this inner for loop for i equal to 1. After execution of this for loop, i is incremented by 1 and then again the condition is checked. Now, let's find out how many times this for loop will execute for i equal to 1. 
We know i is 1, so we can replace i by 1 here. This means the update statement becomes j plus equal to 1, which is equal to j plus plus. So the update statement for i equal to 1 is j plus plus. This means j is incremented by 1 every time this loop runs. We can observe j is initialized to 1. j is then compared with n. Let's assume for j equal to 1, this condition is true. Then the statement will execute. And after this, j is incremented by 1. j becomes 2. Then 2 is compared with n. Let's say 2 is also less than n. This condition is true. The printf function will execute. And again, j is incremented by 1. So clearly, j receives values 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on up to n. This means j has received a total of n values and hence this for loop will execute n times. I am assuming the last value of j as n, not n minus 1, which is less than n, because I want to simplify the further calculations. I can assume j equal to n as the last value of j for which this condition is true because it will not affect the overall time complexity of this function. So, for the sake of simplification, I am assuming the last value of j is not n minus 1, it is n. So, I am eliminating the constant, because the constant does not make huge difference in the final time complexity. So, it is clear that this loop will run n times for i equal to 1. And hence, we can say the frequency count of this for loop is n. Now, what happens when i becomes 2? We know after execution of this for loop, i becomes 2. And now for this value of i, we need to analyze how many times this for loop will execute. j will receive value 1 first and then it is compared with n. Let's say this condition is true. We know the statement will execute. Then j is updated to j plus 2 because this time i is 2. So j will receive values 1, 3, 5, 7 and so on up to n. Now how many times do you think this for loop will execute? In one of our lectures, we understood how to find the time complexity of single loops like this wherein the update statement the variable is incremented by a constant. Here the constant is 2 because i is 2. And we know for these type of loops, the frequency count is always n minus 1 by c plus 1 where c is the constant given in the update statement. Here the constant is 2, so c is equal to 2. And hence, the number of times this for loop will execute will be n minus 1 by 2 plus 1. But eventually, we want to represent the time complexity in terms of asymptotic notation. So, we can eliminate the constants minus 1 and plus 1. We can eliminate minus 1 from the numerator and plus 1 from the overall expression. So, we will be left with n by 2. We cannot eliminate the constant from the denominator because it will change for different values of i. So, the number of times this for loop will execute will be n by 2. This is my assumption. Although it should be n minus 1 by 2 plus 1, but I have eliminated minus 1 and plus 1 because they will not affect the overall time complexity. So, this for loop will execute n by 2 times. Now after this, i is incremented by 1, so i becomes 3. And what are the different values of j? j will receive 1, 4, 7 and so on up to n because this time i is 3. And as this time the constant is 3, therefore we will get n by 3 times. And hence this loop will run n by 3 times. Now we can observe a pattern here, for i equal to 1, we have the denominator as 1 here. For i equal to 2, the denominator is 2. For i equal to 3, the denominator is 3. 
clearly when i is equal to n this is the last value of i for which this condition is true so for i equal to n this loop will run n by n times so now we know how this for loop behaves for each iteration of the outer for loop we know how many times this for loop will execute for each iteration of the outer for loop now we need to add these frequency counts this will give us the total frequency count of this nested for loop structure and eventually this will give us the time complexity because we know the frequency count of this nested for loop structure is same as the time complexity of this nested for loop structure so now let's calculate the total frequency count the total frequency count is n plus n by 2 plus n by 3 and so on up to n by n now we can take n common from the numerators and we will get n times 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 and so on up to 1 by n this summation is equal to log n this is what we learned in one of our lectures where we discussed common logarithms and summations 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 and so on up to 1 by n is log n and as we have n here we will get n log n as the result therefore the time complexity of this nested for loop structure is theta of n log n so this is the time complexity of this nested for loop structure and as mentioned earlier the time complexity of this nested for loop structure is same as the time complexity of this function therefore option c is the correct option this is the time complexity of the function fun so we have solved the problem and this means we are done with this topic okay friends this is it for now thank you for watching this presentation i will see you in the next one